this is it, is the last video that I'm recording here at my office. And in fact, once this video is completed, we're going to be moving stuff out and tearing down the sets and relocating uh, the operations of Paul's hardware from the office back to my home. I'm actually very excited because there's been a bunch of upgrades going on in my house. I have a video series that's uh, gonna be coming out on that very soon. But for now, I'm going to be answering some questions that were asked in last month's Probing Paul, and we're also gonna be doing some mail time. Excellent. Today's video is brought to you by the Corsair IQ Link System Hub, a single small controller that manages all of your system cooling and RGB lighting. The IQ Link System Hub mounts magnetically to your case and can control up to 14 devices, seven per port, with daisy chain support so you can simplify your cable management while still enabling glorious synchronized RGB. Corsair's IQ software can automatically configure IQ Link components while enabling precise fan speed control and real time system monitoring. Click the sponsor link in the video's description for more on the Corsair IQ Link System Hub. A few quick notes before we dive into it. This is a monthly Q&A series, so if you want me to answer your question, leave that question in the comment section down below. All the questions today were taken from last month's Probing Paul back in July. This is my 81st probing. There's also a playlist going all the way back into the depths of time if you're interested in other questions that I've answered in the past. But here we go, first question from TTIFF97, Titif. Uh, hey Paul, looking to build a new PC this summer. I was wondering which brand is the least risk at the moment. They were gonna go with Asus, but after some of the things, they're unsure. And this is actually a subject that uh, I've been discussing a little bit recently. I was talking to some people about it at LTX, uh, as well as the, the fan meetup that we had recently, and brands, brands can suck sometimes. Brands can do things where you're like, hey, that, that, that sucked, that was not consumer friendly. They were trying to pull something over on consumers. They're trying to sell a product that was of a lower tier for more money. There's a whole wide range of things that brands might do to piss us off as consumers, and the question becomes, if you have written off a brand, if you have canceled them, so to speak, then where do you go from there? So what I found myself saying in these conversations was that if I were to write off to not work with a brand that has done something like that, every single time a brand does something like that in my past, say, 15 years or so, working here in the tech industry and with PC hardware, I would not have any brands to work with anymore. Intel has done shady stuff that has pissed us off. AMD has done shady stuff, stuff that's pissed us off. Nvidia has done stuff. Like we can talk about the more recent stuff with Asus. We can talk about stuff that MSI and, and Gigabyte and the ASRock have done that have been anti-consumer. The list goes on and on and I have a few that kind of stick out in my mind like uh, look up Lenovo Superfish. Hmm? You guys remember Superfish with Lenovo? Lenovo's still out there, still making laptops. People are still buying them. So my stance on this question of what to do when a brand has done something egregious that makes you not wanna buy from that brand ever again, is to consider that a brand is not just a single entity or a single person. A brand is usually created by a company. A company is usually comprised of many, many different people at many different levels. And in my opinion, if we're giving these companies just the slightest benefit of the doubt, it's not necessarily the entire company making these decisions. It's probably just a single person or maybe a small group within that company who's decided, ha, here's how we can screw over companies and make this much more money and get ourselves a better bonus this year. So I guess if I wanted to provide like a three point TLDR answer to your question, one is like I said, keep in mind that, that brands are companies, companies are not just an individual. Two would be to look at the company's response to the problem. Um, obviously when something happens like the recent situation with Asus, there's often a public outcry. Once it gets uh, to be loud enough, that company is probably going to come out and respond in some way. How are they responding? Are they owning up to the problem and apologizing and saying that they're gonna do things different in the future and make these changes so that it doesn't happen again? Or are they trying to brush it off or go radio silence and just try to wait till the whole thing blows over? The response for me often has just as much to do with, if not even more, to do with how to, you wanna treat the company in the future when they have done something bad. The third thing is that Companies are still gonna do bad things. I'm sorry, it's gonna happen again in the future. Companies are going to continue to look for ways to make as much money as they can, often at the expense of the consumer. That's kind of how business works to some degree, which kind of sucks. So that is something that we have to accept to a degree, but it's also, I think, the responsibility of like us in the tech media and the community out there that when a company does overstep its bounds and do something that's egregious, that we speak up loudly, then we let them know that that's not acceptable so that they don't think that they can continue to get away with it or get away with something similar to that in the future. Next question from Ian Cohn 1510 Hey Paul, love the channel. Thank you, Ian. Glad to see taking the necessary days and weeks off have helped your overall demeanor. I agree, I'm also very glad about that. 
And Joe's happy that I, I don't yell at him as much anymore. Ian built a system with my guide back in 2019, which is awesome. They're considering some upgrades and uh, they're wondering how I deal with the upgrade process without creating e-waste, which I greatly respect and appreciate. A lot of people don't consider what's gonna happen to the parts and the hardware that they're using after they're done using them. And especially with computer parts, there are often like heavy metals or other things in the actual parts themselves that mean you shouldn't just toss them into the dumpster because you don't want that stuff ending up in a landfill. So the first and best way to deal with e-waste is to not have it be e-waste in the first place. If the hardware is still functional, if it's still somewhat within the range of being capable of handling modern tasks, uh, then see if you can find a new home for it. Whether that means taking apart a system and then selling the components on eBay, or maybe taking those parts and then reaching out to friends in your community to see if anyone can still make use of them. Finding something like a local school that might need uh, help with their computer lab. Schools are often really strapped for cash and getting hardware and getting a new system up and running is often something uh, that you can do there. You'd have to check locally, of course. What I like to do from time to time, and this is probably a little bit more unique to me since I'm like a tech YouTuber, is have a fan meetup. And we actually just did that on Sunday. Kyle and I and a bunch of fans showed up. We actually got this picture kind of late, but there is, I, I think, between 20 and 30 people who arrived. But at that event, I took as much of the hardware that I had on hand that I didn't have a home or an immediate use for and sold it for very, very reduced costs to the fans who had showed up. And then we're taking all that money and we're uh, dropping it into the pool for the Extra Life charity donations for the Extra Life live stream that Kyle and I are planning to do later in Q4. Of course, all this might depend somewhat on the hardware that you're dealing with, and some PC hardware just gets old enough to where it's not even really viable to use at all anymore. And if that's the case for you, I would just internet search for e-waste recycling near me. Uh, there are pop-up events that happen mostly every weekend, depending on the area that you live in, or some cities might have an e-waste recycling center or a specific location where they have e-waste drop-off. But the point is there are professional e-waste recycling operations that will take that hardware and that will siphon off the like useful stuff from it in terms of metals and gold and everything and recycle those components properly so they don't end up in the landfill. Next question from Adam Goss 1735. When setting up a machine, it's often suggested you have a separate drive for your operating system and for your games library. It's a good way to go. With current pricing, PCIe 4.0 drives are quite affordable versus PCIe 5.0. If you could have one of each, which would be better for the operating system versus the game library? Short answer here is I would put my PC games, the game library, the thing that's gonna have the most amount of data that needs to be read off of the drive in like a sequential kind of fashion, that would go on the PCIe 5.0 drive. And I'd be just fine having my operating system and programs and stuff on the PCIe 4.0 drive because when you're considering SSD speeds, there's more than one metric that you need to account for. You'll often see sequential read and write speeds, especially with PCIe 5.0 drives because that is a metric where they can show the PCIe 5.0 drives are that much faster than the PCIe 4.0 drives going from three to five or six gigabytes per second all the way up to like 10 or 12 or I think even like 14 gigabytes per second. But apart from sequential read and write, there's also response time. Response time is like, if I just ask for a little bit of data, how quickly can the SSD get that data out to the system so it can be acted upon versus accessing a massive video file that's multiple gigabytes worth of data. Response time for SSDs has largely been the same going from PCIe 3.0 to 4.0 to 5.0. It has improved a little bit incrementally, but when it comes to a gaming PC in particular, you're actually not going to benefit very much going with those PCIe 5.0 drives that give really, really crazy sequential read and write speeds. The benefits there are gonna be for like load times with games. So a game that you're firing up that needs to drop a bunch of data into the system memory, that is gonna take longer with a drive that is slower, like a 4.0 drive versus a 5.0 drive, versus loading up something like your operating system, which doesn't have nearly as much data as loading up a game. That will still be just about as fast with either drive. So for that reason, I think you'll get the most benefit dropping your games onto the 5.0 drive. But honestly, for a gaming PC, See, you're not gonna see that much benefit going with that faster, more expensive drive. You'd probably be better off just going with two less expensive PCIe 4.0 drives. One last question for today. 2002 Red Eclipse GS says, I love all your videos, thank you very much. I'm curious as to what uh, some of your p favorite PC games throughout the years are. Uh, my favorite of all time series is Mech Warrior 4. All right, this is by no means a comprehensive list. This is just kind of me going back into my history of gaming and mentioning the games that I have played the most, going all the way back to like late high school and college. 
For that, I would say original StarCraft, Quake 2, like all the id games around that time, the Quakes and the Dooms, I played a lot of, but Quake 2, had a lot of fun with that one. The Final Fantasy series has been a long time favorite for me, going all the way back to the original Final Fantasy on the original Nintendo, which I know isn't a PC game, but I've definitely played like uh, Final Fantasy 7 and Final Fantasy 10 on the PC. The Civilization series has also been a mainstay like throughout my life, also going way back to like high school days when I played it on my friend's Macintosh. I think that was like Civ 2 or Civ 3. But more recently, Civ 4, Civ 5, Civ 6, I've uh, invested many hours into World of Warcraft, of course. I started playing that in 2006. I invested many, many hours in that. That was actually something that my wife and I played together a lot back when we were dating. And I would say like World of Warcraft was probably the last time period when I was really investing a lot of my hours of free time into PC gaming. And after that, it became a bit more casual. Part of it was because I started working on YouTube stuff more. So I was actually spending more time building gaming PCs than actually gaming on the PCs themselves. But in more recent years, uh, I've spent a decent amount of time playing Overwatch. That was sort of the carryover. Uh, if you're a Blizzard fan and you played a lot of World of Warcraft and you're looking for something after they did whatever expansion that you decided was too much for you. Okay, the intro to the village a bunch of times. Yeah, and then Joe's reminding me, I guess I guess my favorite PC games now are like the PC games that I benchmark because those are the ones that I spend the most time on. Although it's not really playing often, it's just like running through the same like one or two minute segment over and over again, which is not nearly as entertaining. Oh, and golf with your friends. That, that one stands out to me because when we do our charity live streams, we almost always end with golf with your friends. And it's one of those games that is at the same time like fun, but also maddening and drives you insane. So it's a great one to close off things with. But anyway, that is not a comprehensive list. That's just sort of what bubbled to the surface when I saw this question. That ends the questions and now we're going to transition over to mail time. I'm going to start off with these, and uh, if you want to send me something, it's P.O. Box 4325, Diamond Bar, California. Hopefully Joe can put that up on screen right now. And uh, yeah, send me stuff. I'll open it. It's pretty much the deal. And this is coffee. Ooh. So this was sent by Ozzy's Coffee from New York, and it says, Paul's Hardware, care of Joe. Joe is here today, thankfully. So Joe, does that mean this isn't my coffee? I don't get this coffee? No. Bold and extra caffeinated Ozzy's Coffee, full throttle dark roast. That sounds like it's uh, pretty much focused. This this sounds like the bomb version of coffee. If you if you ever watch uh, the hot ones, but it seems wow. like there's a lot of caffeine going on in here. I mean, it smells it smells good. Thank you. Joe says thanks. Like three guys I know that may sent this. I don't know who though. Whoever whoever from Joe's uh, from Joe's fan club sent that. Thank you. <laughs> and don't worry, Joe, because I I have coffee too. This is from this is from Frederick Pierce from Texas. And this says Mossy Rock Coffee, specialty coffee roaster. We've got Nick's Blend. We've got Costa Rica Tara, Tarazu, Tara, Tarazu, Tarazu. And Nick included a very kind note. Uh, Nick says a few years ago, uh, they decided to build their own PC. Dove right in without any real guidance. Nick found my build guide after uh, comparing it with a few others. Nick decided that my build guide was the best. Excellent choice. Nick and uh, four PCs have now been built by Nick in the house. So that's awesome. It's kind of like that, uh, that entry drug. My goal is to be the gateway drug to PC building. And once you build one, you have to, it's like getting a tattoo, I guess, maybe. You immediately have to build more. All right, so this is actually from Nick's Roasting Company. So that, that's awesome. Mossy Rock Coffee. Uh, and I'm really excited to try this. So Nick, thank you for the coffee. And this also means we have plenty of coffee for both Joe and myself, so much obliged. Next, we have a, a larger package here. This is from Anthony Moore from Illinois. Oh, it's a book. So Anthony's from Illinois. They have a company, a studio. It's called Tech Rat Studios. And Anthony wrote a book, a 30 page uh, PC builders checklist, which is apparently available on Amazon. And Anthony decided to send me a copy. It's got some explanations of the components, some checklists for uh, your parts and the tools you'll need and accessories that you might need. Some, some icons representing the different PC hardware and everything. So uh, well done, Anthony. This looks like it's uh, reasonably well put together. So if anyone is looking for some printed material documentation to supplement perhaps one of my PC building videos, uh, then, then you can check this out. Now, I will say, Anthony, by way of uh, like constructive criticism and feedback, uh, I'm slightly reminded of my time when I worked at Newegg back in the day, and I worked at different jobs back in, in, in Newegg, and at certain times, they wanted me to write tutorials, write guides, stuff like this. And the thought I always had is like, 
things change. Our systems change, the internal system change. PC building changes a bit over time as well. So, so if I was to create a resource, something like this, a checklist, something to help new builders build a PC, I would want it to be flexible enough to be updated. So um, Anthony, I would consider making like an online version of this that you can host on a website somewhere. That way you can easily update it. But for some people having stuff written down like on paper is like absolutely necessary. So I do hope you get some success with this. Thanks for sending it over. Moving right along, this one says Children's Hospital Los Angeles on it, which means it came from the Children's Hospital Los Angeles. Uh, they are the local hospital for us that when we do Extra Life live streams, uh, the charitable donations go to them. And because it's a great organization and they have good people working for them, they occasionally send us some, some thank you stuff. It's cool and we always appreciate it. So we got a card here. Aha, they have a new rep named Michael. So Michael sent this over to introduce himself and uh, also to say hello and say thank you for the work we've done in the past. And we have not done an Extra Life charity stream yet this year. We, we had to skip our summer one because we had a bunch of travel going on and I was getting stuff set up with the office and everything. I should say I was getting stuff set up at home to move out of the office, uh, but we have a base camp water bottle here. We have the Children's Hospital Los Angeles Imagine magazine, and we got stickers because you can never have enough stickers. But thank you to Children's Hospital Los Angeles and Extra Life. And uh, again, guys, we will at least be having a charity live stream in December. We're hoping to do one prior to that in the fall as well. But as always, we'll keep you guys updated on the dates and times and stuff for those when we get them nailed down. Two more boxes to open. I'm using these scissors because Joe, Joe took, <laughs> we're moving out and Joe took my, my knife home. Well, he put my knife in my truck. It's okay, those are good scissors. All right, this one came from Thermal Take and it is labeled, it had a label. It said like Computex Trophy or something. So I don't know, I don't, I don't know what this is. Did I win some sort of competition at Computex from Thermal Take that I was unaware of? Did they have trophies at Computex for some event or reason? And, and then they had extras that they just decided to send me. Is this gonna be like that MSI Lucky the Dragon golden statue that showed up randomly that I wasn't sure what to do with? Actually, that went to a fan at the, at the uh, meetup we had this last weekend. Okay, oh, all right. Can you, see, can you see this? Can you see the text right there? Look at that. Who's the best media? Paul's Hardware is the best media, if you ask Thermal Take at least. Did I bring them up when I was talking about canceling brands and everything? <laughs> no, never mind. Not a, not a good time for that. Not a good time for that. All right. Apparently, I am the best media, and apparently, I won this award, which means suck it, like you know, LMG and Gamers Nexus and anybody else who who calls themselves tech media. Because look at that. That's gorgeous. Look at the star on top. It's like a Christmas tree. This is solid, clear, plexi material or something. It says Thermal Take Best Media Award, Paul's Hardware. Look at that. That's because we, we kicked ass at Computex, I guess, apparently, is, is why I got this award. I had no idea I was receiving this award, <laughs> that Thermal Take was sending it, but I guess I should do a speech real quick. I'd like to thank Thermal Take for this award, and I'd like to thank all the other tech media for sucking enough that I could win. Oh, and Joe, Joe helped too. <laughs> okay, all right, one last box here, and I must admit, uh, I already opened this one, because I wasn't sure what it was. Again, I was like, what, what, is, what? But when I do open boxes, then I decide maybe it'll be good for mail time, so I set it aside for mail time. This came from the team over at Height, Height and I Buy Power, because they had a St. Baldrick's fundraiser, uh, and I was able to do a, a little bit of a plug for it um, a few weeks ago on Tech News. And so uh, Stacy, who is our PR rep over there, who's awesome by the way, hi Stacy, I hope you're doing great, uh, sent just a little thank you, thank you. There we go. All right, so we have a canvas, or can, canvas, canvas. Uh, these are RGB desk mats, desk mats, and uh, actually, we first showed these off, I think CES, is that one that was? Uh, was? Anyway, for mouse mats and everything, uh, this, is, this is the big size, and this is the RGB enabled one. Boom. So here it is, full-size desk mat. This is actually 900 by 370 millimeters. Uh, and they roll it up just enough, uh, just as much as they can. And they put a thing that says, please do not fold or roll smaller than six in inches in diameter because, and that is because um, they have RGB. Very important RGB. Ooh, fun, fun tube that is. Cool, uh, it uses a type C plug and it even comes with a little splitter here so you can plug into two type A connectors if you don't have a type C that can provide enough power to power this whole thing. And then of course, as you can probably see, it's RGB, addressable RGB, 
which right now is just doing the default rainbow effect. So uh, thank you to Height for sending these over. Thanks to any of you guys who also were able to help contribute and donate to the Height fundraiser that they were having a few weeks back. Uh, we just moved back into the office, so I know one of these could probably go on my desk, but my wife might want one too. Maybe, but then Joe said he wants one too, so we'll figure it out. Maybe Joe and my wife can have one and I'll, I'll deal with the standard non-RGB mouse mat. I'll be fine either way, I'm sure. But guys, that's it from here in my office. Thank you all for watching my videos and my channel over the past year plus that I've been reporting from here. I'm still gonna be making videos, posting videos and all that sort of thing. This is just sort of a, an inflection point, a transition point. And as soon as we cut the cameras here, we're gonna be packing stuff up and getting the move underway because I need to shoot tech news on Friday and I need a new set set up back in my garage in order to do that. But once again, if you'd like to send me something to open up on mail time, the uh, PO box is listed down in the video's description. Also big thank you to anyone who sent stuff today and who asked questions and leave me questions for next month if you want down in the comment section below. Also down in the video's description, you can find a link to my store at paulshardware.net where you can buy shirts and mugs and pint glasses and other merchandise to help support my channel. Thank you guys one more time for watching this video. We'll see you in the next one, just not from here.